Hello, book two. Um, this is a shelf tour, book shelf tour. Bookcase number 16, shelf one. Again, it's from the upstairs reading nook. I'm down here filming, but um, it's from my little reading nook area upstairs. The reason I'm down here is we're in the midst, um, I can't really show you, of uh, another major snowstorm, uh, like much of the country. And then we're going to go into some real freezing, deep, deep freezing. Not that we haven't been in plenty of that lately. Um, so for all of you out there traveling, working, going to school, whatever you're doing, be safe. I closed the library today. It's no sense having people get hurt. And then the schools ended up canceling halfway through the day. So we went, I went and got the kids and we're hunkered down. And uh, now we just gotta wait for mama to get home safely. So I thought I'd do take the time, maybe film ahead of a few of the, the uh, shelf tours. So bookcase 16 shelf one is primarily sci-fi and fantasy. Um, again, like much of the stuff upstairs, I'll just start right out. And this very drab and boring looking volume is anything but. This is one of the great histories of science fiction called Trillion Year Spree. History of Science Fiction by Brian W. Aldous, assisted by David Wingrove. And it's an Athenaeum publication. And uh, that's out of New York and it was in 1986. I almost never buy ex-library copies, um, but I made an exception with this one simply because the volume is so important and, I, and I've used it, um, but it's not something I like to do. And th this, this is an excellent, excellent history. So that, that's Trillion Year Spree by Brian W. Aldous. The next uh, volume I've had book chats about the stories in here. This is 1986 Annual World's Best SF, edited by Donald A. Walheim. And uh, obviously 86, and Da Books is Donald A. Walheim, publisher title page and um, in here uh, the best stories of the year Earthgate by J. Brian Clark on the Dream Channel panel by Ian Watson The Gods of Mars by Gardner Dozois, Jack Dan and Michael Swanwick, The Jaguar Hunter by Lucis Shepard, Sailing to the Xanthium by Robert Silverberg Web Rider by J.G. Carr With Virgil Odom at the East Pole by Harlan Ellison the Curse of Kings by Colleen, Connie Willis, Fermi and Frost by Frederick Pohl, and Potts by C.J. Shearer. And then next, Andrew uh, J. Offit, The Iron Lords, which is volume one of Wars of the Gods on Earth. And this one uh, came out in 1979. And uh, let me see if they say who did this. Cover arts by Tom Kidd. And then another volume I've used on this channel before for various things is Famous Science Fiction Stories, Adventures in Time and Space, 35 Great Stories of the World of Atomic Power, Rockets, Robots, Time and Space Machines, etc. Edited by Raymond J. Healy and J. Francis uh, McComas. It's a modern library giant. So I dip in and out of this, which is why it's up there near near my reading chair. Copyright 46 and 57. A lot of good stories in this thing. Classic old stories. Some that maybe haven't stood the test of time as well as others. Then here's a magazine. I used to have literally hundreds of these. It's Analog Science Fiction and Fact, July, August two, uh, 2017. So now I don't subscribe, I just pick them up now and then. I'd really like to subscribe. 
So, um, let me see here. I read The Not Far Enough by Martin Shoemaker, Martin L. Shoemaker. So, I, I enjoy the science fiction magazines when I can get them. Then this is a non-science fiction book. Um, an old 50 cent paperback. Kenneth Roberts, Lydia, uh, Lydia Bailey, Complete and Unabridged. An old vintage paperback. And this uh, is Perma Books, P165S, whatever that means. And it's uh, Perma Books, Garden City, New York. And it's 1952. The original hardback came out in 47, I guess. I, it's, it's delicate enough. I, would know, I just loved the cover, loved the look of it, so I grabbed it. I got it for almost nothing. And... Uh, I, it's not, it's not even in good enough shape to read. Here's my old copy of Frank Herbert's classic, Dune, winner of Science Fiction Shugo and Nebula Awards. Let me get a look at what an early artist thought that the sandworms looked like. It's an ace book. And this was uh, 1965. Uh, I wonder if they say who... Did the cover? Uh, they got cartographic notes. Get this nice little map in the back. It's it's actually in the back. Um, they have like a glossary. I don't know if you can see that. Quite extensive, actually. And uh, I wish they would say who did the. Uh, oh, cover is by John. Shown hair. So, pretty neat. <coughs> then, continuing the theme, uh, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson's The Winds of Doom. I still read these. I'm not caught up on the, the uh, Herbert and Anderson volumes. I, I, once in a while, I'll grab them. Um, and I, I, I like them. They're not the original, obviously. I don't like them as much as I like the original, but I like them. Then here, one of my favorite authors ever, Andre Norton, The Last Planet. And this is, uh, let's see, Ace Books again. Original title was Star Rangers. Um, copyright 1953. So, and Andre Norton. Then, we'll get into, uh, let me see, I might have knocked these out of order I did. Yeah, that's all right. It doesn't matter. Then here's a good one. This is an award books Battle for the Planet of the Apes by David Gerald. Many of you will remember him as the screenwriter for Trouble with Troubles for Star Trek. And uh, this thing's actually in pretty good shape. And you can hear my kids up ye yelling while they're playing the video games. 1973. And it's for Harlan Ellison, who will appreciate the thought. That's pretty nice. And then, Joe Haldeman, The Hemingway Hoax. Uh, and this one came out, it's an Avon book. This came out in 1990. The hoax uh, proposed by John Baird by... Uh, to John Baird by a two-bit con man in a CD Key West bar was shady but potentially profitable. With little left to lose, the struggling middle-aged Hemingway scholar agreed to forge a manuscript and pass it off as Papa's last uh, lost masterpiece. But Baird never realized his actions would shatter the history of his own earth and others. And now the unsuspecting academic is trapped out of time, propelled through a series of grim parallel worlds and pursued by an interdimensional hitman with a literary license to kill. Then we got a couple of these um, um, Fritz Leiber, uh, Fawford and the Grey Mouser paperbacks. These are older ones. These are uh, Granada Mayflower books um, out of London. Uh, Toronto, Sydney, and New York, and they came out, and uh, this one is 
it came out in 79, the original, it, it was originally published in 68, but this version came out then. And then the next one, number five in that series, The Swords of Lakmar. And this came out in uh, 79 also, but uh, it was originally published in 68. I love these stories. I'm trying to reread them right now in order. I've done a book chat about, I think, the first one. Then we have Lynn Carter, um, Beyond the Gates of Dream. It's Belmont science fiction. Lynn Carter did a lot for sword and sorcery, that type of thing, as much as an editor is a writer. Um, this one came out... Uh, let me see. They actually list some other books. This is uh, Belmont Books, New York City. Uh, 1969. Sort of an off-the-wall little fantasy. And then we get into some Michael Moorcock, whose stuff I really enjoy. So we have Stormbringer. Um... Uh, another Daw Books, Donnelly Walheim, New York. And this is uh, originally from 63, but this is uh, 1977 printing. And it's the sixth of the Elric series. And I've got all these collected in a hardback, but I like the paperbacks. This one is, uh, let me see here. I'm trying to do this in some sort of... Okay, here we have... Let's see, Rune Staff, Rune Staff. So this is third, fourth, second, first. Yeah, let's do them in order. This will be fun. It's Michael Moorcock. It's uh, the history of the Rune Staff. And these are all Da science fiction. So here's the first volume. I, I like the art on these. And let me see. Uh, the cover is by uh, Richard Clifton Day. So there's that one. And volume two is Mad God's Amulet, Michael Moorcock. I see the big cat there. That is uh, Richard Clifton Day cover. Then The Sword of the Dawn, the third volume in the Rune Staff by Michael Moorcock. Let me take a look at that. And that... Let's see. Oh, these are all Daw books. The same, uh, the same cover art, Richard Clifton Day. We have a map by John Collier in this one. And then the fourth vo and final volume, The Rune Staff which is in the history of the rune staff. There's the cover. And that is uh, cover art by Richard Clifton Day and Matt by John Collier. So a nice series. I have not read this series um, and I managed to pick them up all at once and I'm actually looking forward to these because I've had pretty good luck with Michael Moorcock. Then here's uh, the Chronicles of Corum number five, the Oak and the Ram. Look at this cover. Isn't that something? And the uh, cover art on this, this came out in 73. The cover art, they usually say, oh, cover, it's on the back here. David McCall Johnson. You can see right down there. And then. The fifth novel of El Elric Melnabone, The Bane of the Black Sword, Michael Mo Moorcock. This is another Daw book. Look at that cover. And uh, I used to have tons of these Daw books. I, I wish I had a lot more of them. So The Bane of the Black Sword, the number five. And it came out originally in 67, but this is from 77. And then there's a title. And moving out of that, we'll go into one of my favorite novels of all time. One that got me started in sci-fi, which is Andre Norton's Daybreak, 2250 A.D. 
and this uh, is uh, it was originally Starman Sun. Came out in '52. Um, so I know I don't know. It doesn't say the printing on this. I'd be surprised if this was '52. Uh, who knows? Then um, this is actually an omnibus that Bean Books is doing. And I just finished the Star Courier, which is the first novel, and they have To Keep the Ship, Matilda's Stepchildren, and Star Loot. And these are A. Bertram Chandler's uh, John Grimes saga. This is a the third collection, Galactic Courier. For a good adventure, you can't go wrong with these. And Chandler was a, um, I believe he was a merchant mariner. So he, he gives that sort of nautical flair to space travel. Then here's one that I picked up. Um, I believe this is one that Steve Donahue's mentioned before. It's Werner Venge, A Fire Upon the Deep. Now, um, and this came out in 92, Space Opera. Uh, Hugo Award winner for Best Novel. So, let's see how that is. Then here's an old Isaac Asimov Paperback, Opus 100, a little blurb by Arthur C. Clarke on the top. So, uh, it's an Asimov sampler. It's a Dell book, and it came out in 69. Uh, so, it's just a sample of his writing. Then one that's been mentioned on the channel before is Astounding, the John W. Campbell Memorial Anthology. Um... Contain, it's a tribute to John W. Campbell, um, the uh, famous editor. Uh, he died in July of 71, and this is a tribute. And it has a story, uh, Brothers by Gordon R. Dixon, uh, The Chilled Cycle of Dorsai, that I just read because Steve Donahue talked about it, and it was wonderful. Good story. Then, one of those novels that is based on a movie and uh, is a sort of a follow-up type of thing that is actually good. It's a Del Rey book and it's called Splinter of the Mind's Eye by uh, Alan Dean Foster. So when the original movie came out of course we had to wait a while for more movies and um, this is a Ballantine book. It came out in 1978 and everything we could find, we, we ate up. Then Catherine Kurtz, The Legacy of Lair. Uh, an interstellar cruiser shoots through space. An unknown force is killing its passengers. One by one by one. So there's that. You hear my five-year-old up there singing. He sings when they play video games. It's hilarious. Then another copy. I don't know why I have so many copies of this. Uh, Ray Bradbury, The Illustrated Man. Then a Terry Pratchett. Um, this one is called Thud. Um, the only Terry Pratchett I've read is um, The Color Magic. So this is just, I saw it somewhere and grabbed it because I wanted to read a little more Terry Pratchett. Um, and this was just, I, I don't even remember where I grabbed it. Oh, he's singing up a storm. I don't know if you can hear him, but it's pretty funny. Um, then a paperback of uh, George Railroad Martin's Game of Thrones. I read it when it originally came out. Don't have them anymore. I think I read the first two when they came out. I'm considering... Uh, a reread of the whole series. My wife's been watching this the uh, HBO production, and we buy her those every year. But uh, I watch them off and on. I might I might go back to the books. Then I've been doing a buddy read on <clears throat> Anne McCaffrey's *The Dragon Riders of Pern* uh, with Elena Macredina. So we first read *Dragon Flight*. And then we read Dragon Quest. And the only copy I have of the next one, White Dragon, is um, 
an e on my, on my Nook on my phone. So um, I'll probably read it that way and try to run into a decent copy of all three. They're all old paperbacks. And then I've only got the first volume in not a great condition, but I love the old covers. A Ursula K. Le Guin's A Wizard of Earth Sea. First one in the Earth Sea trilogy. I always like these. So that was that 16th bookcase, the first shelf. Almost all of it fantasy and science fiction, one exception. And uh, thank you, BookTube.